the most requested service ticket on Shortel Systems is the famous One Way Media. This is Peter Buswell with DrVOIP.com with another troubleshooting tech tip. And today we're going to take a quick look at uh, the most likely root cause for one way media. One way media being defined as I pick up my telephone set, I call Harry. Harry can hear me, but I can't hear Harry. That's one way media. It's a common, usually in the initial deployment of a system, and uh, it variably, very easy to troubleshoot if you know what you're looking for. Before we go much further, I think that uh, you will want to make sure that you know and have access to the following tools. Uh, before you can do troubleshooting, you're going to need uh, some tools, and it's uh, been our experience that you should be installing my SQL YOG, uh, which you can download uh, the Community Edition free of charge. There's no reason not to have it. It's a great tool, help you manipulate the database, help you see what's going on. You're going to need a cup, copy of PuTTY, and uh, PuTTY uh, provides an SSH alternative uh, to Telnet, and this is absolutely required for um, accessing the Shortel SG V series of switches. TerraTerm, uh, those of you who like Hyper Terminal, continue to use it. Those of you who um, uh, would like some other logging capabilities will find TerraTerm to be a necessary part of your basic toolkit. You're going to need to know where Shortel keeps uh, the key configuration or test debug tools that you will need. Uh, principally the IPBX CTL command and the phone CTL command, both one used for logging into switches, one for used for logging into phones, and as I said, you'll need SSH uh, to log into telephone uh, switches that are of the type voice. Let's take a look at where Shortel keeps the XE files that you will need before you can telnet into a phone or telnet into a Shortel switch. They typically live in the root directory, program files, shoreline communications, and shoreware server. In here you'll find a variety of resources, none of which I'm going to focus on during this clip, but some of the ones that I will highlight, Burn Flash is very useful. Uh, we'll cover that in another clip. Uh, IPBXCTL is absolutely necessary precursor to telnetting into a switch. You'll have to run this um, security shell before you can telnet to the switch. And the program that we're going to focus on for troubleshooting one-way media is the uh, phone CTL XE uh, file, which lives in this directory. So now that you know where it is, um, we're going to go there through a command line prompt. So we're going to change directory to C colon backslash program files. Whoops, spell it right. Pro program files, short tell, blah, 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 shortware server. It's the smallest number of keystrokes I know how to get there. At any rate, <clears throat> phone CTL uh, needs to phone CTL minus password. The default password for these uh, Shortel systems is 1234. Understand that that password can be changed through the Shortware director. Um, go in there, and there are two locations for changing passwords for the phone and for the switches. We'll, we've covered them in another video clip, so I won't go to it now. And minus telnet on the security shell for telnet. And then the IP address of the phone that we like to telnet into. So at this point, you can see that telnet has been enabled. And we are now able to telnet into that phone. So, telnet to the phone, and once inside the phone, 
uh, we'll get this uh, prompt. At that point, uh, you can t type a help command and get some information about the other commands um, that you can access from within inside the phone. But the ones that we're most interested in, and I consider this the most valuable command, is the uh, print sys info and it is uh, case sensitive so it's lowercase print capital S sys capital I info and this will provide you some very necessary information for troubleshooting uh, we get information about um, the phone version information about the processor um, what's of interest here is the MAC address of the phone we can see the application name and the boot name in Flash. Uh, these are downloaded from the Shoreware Headquarters server. Um, the most vital information is what call manager this switch is registered with. Excuse me, I said that backwards. Which call manager this phone is registered with. So um, the MGCP uh, call control server happens to be a switch at this address, 192.168.250.20. So we know, you know that this phone has registered. Uh, we know the IP address of the phone. We just tell net it into it so we can confirm it there. Here, the default router. We want to know what this device thinks its default route is. Uh, because as you can see down here, uh, the FTP server, uh, in this case the Shoreware Director, excuse me, the Shoreware Headquarters server, which provides FTP services and is the um, repository for, for example, the bin files that the Shortel phone needs to download, that lives at 192.168.250.250 in this deployment. And the phone is in the subnet 192.168.150.55. So it's going to be very important that these two subnets can speak to one another. And therefore, this default router uh, needs to know how to get uh, to this address. I can also see here that port 1, which is the, the uh, network port on the bottom of the Shortel phone, uh, tagging is turned on, and I am in VLAN 2. Uh, if you're troubleshooting a phone, especially if you're remote, you're going to want to take note of this information. And then we have the SNTP information that lets us know um, which time server is being used for this phone.